Welcome everyone. This video will show how we installed a Mitsubishi multi-zone system consisting of three ceiling cassettes and a two and a half ton condenser in a ranch style home in Denver, Colorado. This is the living room 18,000 BTU ceiling cassette. Bedroom one, a 6,000 BTU ceiling cassette. And finally, bedroom two, we also used a 6,000 BTU ceiling cassette. This is the MXZ30 condenser. It's a cold climate hyperheat unit that's being placed on a pad and risers. And we conceal the electrical and the line sets in the opening you see here, which fed into a crawl space landing in each room through a closet, which Jared will show in the final walkthrough. As you can see here, when it's hooking up the last uh, zone here, now Mitsubishi has a certain color code we always adhere to. Um, black, white, red, and then obviously your ground. And these wires, they gotta be the same on both ends. Terminated here and inside on the individual heads inside. So if you don't buy the Mitsubishi approved wire, you could probably still use any 14 gauge four conductor out there, no matter the color. As long as you got your colors the same on both ends, it really won't make a difference. But as far as Mitsubishi goes, this is what they recommend. So we use the wire they recommend, the wire from them. We use all the Mitsubishi stuff just to eliminate any possibility that something could be bad. So you want to be the best, you got to do it like the best. We're the best. So be like me, be like him, be like us. Texas University, out. Hey everybody, this is Jared in Denver with Douglas Plus. We got Don on the mic. <laughs> so this is a traditional 18,000 BTU unit. Um, we basically got done installing this one in this kind of bigger room. If you look, if you look over here, you can see how big the room is. We'll put Don to show them. Um, these units are all the same size from nine to 18,000 so there's a 9 a 12 and an 18 but what we were finding out was the nines were just a little too much for smaller rooms so Mitsubishi actually came out with a new design a 6,000 BTU because these machines are scalable they can you know increase and decrease the BTUs coming out of the machines depending on the room temperature so they're not always going to produce what they're designed for so 9,000 BTU in a small room is kind of overkill an 18 is perfect for a room like this because it's going to be able to scale itself as, as needed, okay? Um, Denver, show them real quick how big this unit is. Roughly 47 inches is the footprint of this grill. And like Jared said, the 9,000, 12,000, and 18,000 BTU all share the same grill and the same physical dimensions. Yeah, so. exactly. They're all identical. 47 inches, roughly. Again, a not, not huge and obtrusive, but, you know, maybe a little overkill for a smaller room. Yeah. And then follow Denver into this other room. This is our first two 6,000 BTU units that we got done. So um, it was kind of uh, exciting. So this is a, the new 6,000 BTU ceiling cassette. Roughly the same design, paddles on both sides, the grill. The veins and everything inside work the same. Kind of helps being six foot three here. <laughs> so here, you can see here. They're a little less. They're right at 30. We're about ten and a half inches shorter than the the traditional ones we have out there. The nines, the twelves, the eighteens. So I mean, for a room that's smaller like this, this is the perfect solution. Again, it's low profile, unobtrusive, great little condenser. Oh, oh, evaporator. Evaporator coil. Ha <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, we tried to trick you guys. Yeah. See if you <laughs> catch anything in the comments and, and comment it in the comment section of your comment. Something good. Yeah. But this is not a very big room. It's maybe 10 by 12. What's that? 120 square feet. It's small. Or something yeah. like that. It's not huge. Eight foot ceilings. So before these sixes, we were putting in a, a 9,000 BTU, which again, it's overkill. I mean, obviously it would work. It would just satisfy really quickly or whatever, but 
for the application that we have here, this is this is the perfect head for that. And one thing I did notice too, when we acquired our first few 6,000 BTU units, a lot of people probably think that they're gonna be less expensive, but they're a little bit more expensive than a nine, to be honest with you. And the reason why is because they're kind of more of like a specialty system now. So I noticed they're about $50 more than a 9,000 BTU unit, our cost anyway. So tremendous expenditure. But this is our first two 6,000s that we did. And then we do really pride ourselves on the fact that we can kind of do a little bit better installation than most companies. Not that anybody else is worse than us or whatever, but they had several customers or com companies come out and give them bids for this system. And they wanted to actually um, run the pipes on the outside of the house and or through her closet here and I told the customer that we could just go up inside the wall so what we did is we just cut a small access hole out of the bottom here and then we made another one up here we ran our drain and all of our pipes and communication lines inside that wall and you can see look I mean that the wall is only that big so you could be you can get these pipes pretty much anywhere if you have a little void you can do it so we left this open so you guys can see what we did, but all the pipes, control wires, drains, and everything are in there. And then what we did is we took it down into the crawl space because they actually have a really big crawl hole. And then the condenser literally sets just right here outside this wall. We'll go out there right now and take a look at it. Hi. This was Denver's idea too. He, he'd come up with the idea. I'm the brains of the operation. And the brawn. And the brawn <laughs> and the beauty. Yeah. And the, uh, Plucky comic relief. It's me. The Joker, as I'm known. Some people nickname him the Joker. The world of YouTube. <laughs> come on over here, Don. Come, 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 come. Come over oh, here. Hey, get on in here, Don. I want to show you something. Stay right there. All right, you guys. I'm whispering and you can probably barely hear the condenser. See how quiet they are? They're really quiet. So um, that's, that's, this is an MXZ30. This is kind of, I don't know, it's one of my favorite units just because of what it can do and the size of it, but they're, they're uh, one of my favorite condensers. But see how quiet they are? Hard to get a hold of them though, right? They are really difficult to find right now, you know. Um, and what we did too is, there was already a hole in their house. It kind of worked out for us, but we ran all our pipes through there and we expansion foam that. So once that foam dries, we'll just cut it real clean and then they could paint the wall right there. But make sure you expansion foam your penetrations and seal it up. You don't want to be lazy and, you know, leave a big old hole so critters can get in there like myself. Anyway, this is the, the power. We ran the power. We ran the power also through the crawl space. You don't always got to run your conduit all the way. You can, but this house is kind of tricky. Um, I, I felt like personally it'd be a little bit cleaner of a look of just running a small amount of conduit, get into the crawl hole, come over, staple it up in the crawl hole, then exit out into our service disconnect. And if you come over here, you'll see what we did is we put a small little four by four junction box right there. We ran our conduit up and over. I had to do this little offset bend around that existing LB. Yes, you can take the LB off. So if you guys want to make fun of me and say you can't take the LB off, you're wrong. And then we came down here, ran an LB and we, we put it in there. So, um, and then you just landed it. We just landed it right on the- uh, <laughs> Cut. <laughs> you got a um, Sharpie? I do. Yes. Always, always label your breakers too. Label it on the door over there. That's where they have the whole bit. I like doing it right here. Mid sub. <laughs> See the sub? That means oh. subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe. Mid subscribe to our channel. Mid subscribe to us. Don't mm. forget to do this. <laughs> Scrap. American. Oh yes, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's Mitsubishi Electric Train now, right? Mitsubishi Electric Train, yes. Good stuff. Let's go down and show them down under. 
You want to go in the crawl hole? Sorry, I don't do that. <laughs> that part, we if we show down you, under. This ain't Australia, Don. If we had to show you how what we did down in the crawl hole. Look, here's the thing. We can't give away all our secrets. We already showed you our special custom way to put it inside the wall. So you guys got to do the rest. We're not going to show you everything. That's why we're the best because we have all those little tricks. But you will get there. You can do it. Tell you what, I'm going to make you a one time deal. Subscribe to the channel. Comment, I subscribe, and I will personally send you a DM of how we did it with pictures. How's that? <laughs> That's a challenge. Let's see it. Let's see how many likes and comments we'll get. Yeah, and, and, and it was a battle down there, you know. We had to we had to fight a couple rattlesnakes, a couple raccoons, squirrels. Oh, there, yeah, man. I mean <laughs> we we came out of there, Doug came running out, jumped out of the hole. So there was a hippo down there trying to get him, you know, and we're really environmentally friendly, so we, we don't want to have any lasting impact, you know, so we just got in there and did our thing, strapped all our stuff, and we just got out of there and let, you know, let them live in their jungle. That's... Same with the attic, you know, because we, we had to we had to go all the way down into the crawl hole, which is really dangerous and, and uh, scary down there. I mean, there's there's stuff down there you'll never want to see again. It's very scary down there. Same in the it's attic. Scary. Very scary. Very scary. So, but that's well, it. Another job well done, boys. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Thank you, YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. It means the world to us. That's what helps us create this comment content and keep making these videos for you. Doesn't cost you nothing to throw a thumbs up and a comment on there. So do that so we can keep delivering the best.